Hello and welcome to the Decibel Boost Podcast, the official music podcast of the website Surreal Resolution. I'm your host, Robert, and I can't believe Philip Mewson plagiarized his own birth certificate. And with me, I have... Dimension W? Nah. Dimension Z? Yeah. And... I'm the one that killed Man Nay, so what? Y'all motherfuckers. Okay, first off, that's... Okay, that... So, in the same week, mayonnaise, and apparently now potatoes, which, okay, the independent, where the fuck did you get that picture of, like, the potato with the mean beans in there? You, you know, from that page, things full of beans that should not be full of beans? Oh, God, that shit's fucking nasty, man. Like, we're talking black beans, hell yeah, stuff that shit up, make it all Cubano and fuck. <laughs> Ugh. Plus, that means you probably also murdered potato salad. Which, good. But the, why the fuck would I want something that takes three days to do right? The only thing that should <laughs> take three days to do right is barbecue. Mmm. Slow yeah, roasted. Nigga, 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 at least kill the one that kill the one that carried me with the ugly ass raisins and, and grapes and all that shit. Stop, ah, stop put, white people. Stop putting that shit in there. It, it does not belong on no damn potato salad. Let niggas yeah. do the shit. Let us do the shit. <laughs> plus, it's, plus, like, it's fucking bullshit, because I use mayo all the time, because it goes well on BLTs. You know, a nice thing to, like, slather on the bread just to give it, like, you know, some moisture when you're crunching through the bacon. Plus, fucking, like, they put mayo and shit on fast food all the time, and I eat that shit. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I would put mayo with my salsa to make a nice burrito dip. Uh, okay, what? that's fucking weird. Hey, hey, don't. Don't knock it until you tried it. Mix some mayonnaise with some salsa, get some frozen burritos, dip it in there, and it's delicious. <laughs> no. You have to make up with you have to make up creative things when you don't have money. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, but there's creative and then there's bullshit. <sighs> I'm white, we get it. Yeah, yeah. So episode ninety three. Ninety three, so uh how's everything going with all y'all? Um, let's see, where do I begin? Um, so, funny story about my job. I go back to, I went back to work last Wednesday, a week ago, only to be sent home because I was still feeling pretty sick. So I went to urgent care. Turns out I tested negative for strep throat. Mono, I don't know yet. I may have, uh, norovirus still lingering in me. I haven't heard back yet. But, uh, yeah, not fun. Not fun at all. So the next day, I went back to work, and I'm feeling kind of not too into it. I'm just feeling like, what am I doing here? Why am I wasting my time here? So, I quit. Mm. I wrote a resignation letter. I walked out, and I haven't been there back. And, yeah, that that that's it. It my job has, has My job has started to become too detrimental for my health so I just decided yeah this isn't worth it anymore I might have a new job very soon if I can contact the right people soon enough so I won't be out of work for too long because like you know I gotta pay my bills and crap and in the meantime I've just been uh sulking in my uh ever going <clears throat> and I'll just quote I does for this meme <clears throat> I have crippling depression, which I, 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 which I, I, I do. It's it's not fun. It's not fun right, at all. Right, I forgot. I'm not I've been to sulking that. in that with um, a good bit of music, mostly Devin Townsend and Between the Buried and Me, which uh, it's a great Mr. Rec, fantastic album. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And aside from that, aside from that, that's just uh, all I've been doing for the past couple of days. I live a very sad and pathetic life. Feel bad for me, damn it. It's okay. We all do. Anyway, what about you, Mark? Let's see. Um, it rained. I work. Um, my car, my car's engine light is on again for some reason. Even though I hear nothing unusual, nothing unusual about it. It's like it's it's that type of shit. It's like okay, it's working fine, but why the light's still on? I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it's the, it's that shit that's been going on. I see. Anyway, uh, as for me, well, I had a 
bit of, you know, stuff going on. Uh, first off, I saw the Slender Man movie, and, you know, even as someone who recognizes that maybe his high school creepypasta phase was a little cringy, that movie was fucking insulting. Like, really lame and bad and misses the point of what made Slender Man work. Oh, man. Jeez, that's, that's fucking... You know what? I, I should probably post, like, a link to it. There, there, you should see this great video review, like, by a bunch of guys who made a bunch of really popular Sunderman web shows way back in the day. Like, they all got together as, like, the biggest, most ambitious crossover event since the Avengers. And, mm. you know, that pretty much tells you in more detail how and why the movie just doesn't work. <laughs> Although, to be fair, slightly more memorable than that bullshit Marble Hornets movie. Slightly. <laughs> It's not good, but it's technically more something. I told you you should have went and gone to see Black Klansman instead. Yeah, yeah, we know. Spike Lee yeah. and Jordan Peele. Woo. I mean, I got this weekend, oh. so there'll be that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, next up, uh, I finished my week of having to take care of uh, you know my sister's boyfriend's cats, and I earned a cool 40 bucks out of it. Not to mention plenty of uh, cat pets and scritches, even though uh, the black cat, Luna, she kept digging into my pants every now and then. My, my, my only good pants, too. I need those. And so with that money and some uh, GameStop, you know, points I had saved up, I was able to pick up uh, some games. So I got, uh, I finally got a copy of Red Dead Redemption, got me some Dragon Ball Fighter Z, suck it, Jim. And, uh, <laughs> some much-needed replacement styluses for my 3DS. Because, seriously, I had to just keep relying on my Wii U stylus for that. So, it's nice to have one that actually, you know, goes with this model and fits in the thing. You know, so I can finally just say I've had it with Persona Q and just switch on the safety mode because that final boss is a fucking bullshit. <sighs> Whatever, but at least I finished that game so now I can, you know, send that off to the Magic Rental Place and then go on with the rest of my gaming life. And then, of course, uh, we're recording this on Wednesday because on Monday, I had a show to play. Yeah, Monday night shows. But, you know, it was, you know, pretty cool. It was really, like, nice venue. Like, it sort of took place in this, you know, this bar. Um, but the back room they had to play was, like, somewhat bigger than I was expecting in terms of just, like, capacity. Think of, like, one of those TGIF sitcom houses where the outside looks really small, but the inside, it's like, boom! Boom! And, you know, this venue was really nice. Shit, in the back, they had a few old arcade machines. One that had Street Fighter 2, one with Mortal Kombat 4, and a combo Miss Pac-Man and Galaga machine. And they all were set to, like, unlimited free play. So I was like, yes! Not to mention, everybody in every band got, like, two free drink tickets. So, like, not per band, but per band member. So, you know, I had a drink before the show and a drink after the show, which, damn, that already makes it the best show I've played in a long-ass time. Get, gotta get that, uh, gotta get that alcohol in me. You know, and it was enough alcohol that the morning after, I went for breakfast and got biscuits and gravy. Mmm, gravy. <laughs> or, you know, how Ed says gravy. I, I can't do the voice really well. Gravy! Sure, like that. Except, you know, whiter and dumber. And more <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> Canadians are weird. But, um, yeah, so all of that, pretty busy week going on. So sorry if this, you know, comes in, is coming in somewhat late. I, I got, I got responsibilities. What can I say? And so with all those formalities out of the way, time to get into the usual weekly business. Starting off with, of course, the new sun discussions, of which there are plenty. Remember to check the description for a playlist that you can hear all these songs and then come back here and hear our takes. Or, you know, listen to our takes first, then hear the songs if any of this intrigues you. So first off, we have an update to one of the bigger musical mimetic sagas of uh, the year so far, and that is, of course, the relationship between Weezer and the band Toto. Starting off with the random Twitter campaign to get Weezer to cover Africa, which ultimately led to a cover of Rosanna and then Africa. <laughs> and then uh, Toto returned the favor with some live performances of a Weezer cover, specifically the song Hash Pipe, which is one of the big singles off the Green Album. Certainly an interesting choice of song, not the first I would have picked. I would have figured they covered, like, I don't know, God, what, what was that song off Pinkerton? Uh, El Scorcho, that was the one. But, um, 
you know, now we have an official studio version of that cover. So, you know, they found the time to get into the studio and record all that. And, you know, as much as it sounds like the original song, pretty much, in terms of its basic structure and everything and riffs, there's, you know, some of those bongo accentuations in the drum pattern, like, soft, but just enough that you notice it. There's, of course, those added layers of Toto synthesizers. The vocals sound somewhat better, because, I mean, this is one of those songs where, like, Rivers vocally is kind of reaching a little bit higher than he can actually reach. So, you know, having people that can reach that vocal level is certainly an improvement, but overall, I mean, it's basically Toto covering Weezer. Just like how Weezer was covering Toto, sounding like Weezer covering... You get the point. I'm going in circles right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty solid cover, even if it does just sound like Toto playing a Weezer song like it's by Weezer. But I suppose, you know, quid pro quo, cover for a cover, it's pretty good. I do want to know a couple things. One, uh, the single art that they put up there for, you know, the Spotify Apple Music link, it pretty much looks just like the uh, art style of the Green Album, which, uh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I also want to mention Toto. These guys, you know, the, the Africa, Rosanna people, they dipped into prog rock on their album Mindfields. It is excellent. Go listen to it. Recommended. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, moving on to this next song here. So, uh, we're going to talk about my favorite Joey in the whole world. That's right, Joey Perp! <laughs> what, did you think I was going to say something else? There are <laughs> other... Hey. I mean, what, what, you think there's like a Joey Joe story yet? We haven't gotten an Australian JoJo yet, please. Maybe in part nine. But yes, uh, Mr. Joseph Purple, um, apparently he's been banding about a new project that he may release sometime. It's we, we don't know shit yet, but he has graced us with a Lucy track here called uh, March 12th. And, you know, at last I, any of us heard was from, you know, his Eye Drops mixtape and that Adult Swim single. But uh, this one here, it's, it's, the beat is very sparse, but it's got like a lot of like warbled twinkling melodies to it against a sort of clickety clackety boom bap drum beat and you know there, there's basically that you know just offering enough space for him to spit bars which you know she offered me brain i said i'd rather have her mind so you know your your mileage will vary i think it's an okay song but not the best i've heard from him it's just kind of there i suppose yeah, this track is it's pretty alright. I mean, I ain't heard from him in a while, and and and, and like I can say, I dig I dig the beat of it, and and like I do 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 dig how like in there he does, it it does have this more um ur, more urgent voice in him, like he has something to tell you. Like it's like here, like if I didn't rap and then start singing songs, but when they give but when they give me daps. Can I tell that something's wrong? It's on the eyes, man. These niggas lies, man. I heard from a wise man. Don't trust a wise man. Offer my money. Says she better have time, man. All right, all right. That's that was some that was some that was some good spitting. But it's like mm, the checks. It's fine. It's fine. It's, my fire isn't as good. Like I listen, to, I, 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 I listen to it again, maybe a couple times. But yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. But uh, now let's move on uh, to some more Alice in Chains. We're about, at this point, a week and a half away from their newest album, Rainy or Fog. So, you know, August 24th, keep an ear out for that. So, um, and we have the third single from the album, Never Fade. And I gotta admit, of the three, this one feels like it's the most, like, super mainstream radio single of the three. Hell, it almost kind of reminds me of Check My Brain off of Black Gives Way to Blue. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty, like, straightforward kind of pseudo-grungy garage rock sort of thing. And, you know, it works okay for what it is, but I will say the vocal performances here are pretty damn good. And finally, it seems like we get much more William Duvall on this, and he carries himself pretty well, especially during, like, some of those pre-chorus segments where, you know, he seems to get, like, more of a presence in the mix than even Cantrell does. Though Cantrell does still take over in the main chorus, so, you know, there's that. But still, it's much appreciated overall. Yeah, I said the same thing. It definitely comes off as more of a upfront active rock singles in the previous two tracks you've heard. 
And yeah, it's a bit more upbeat than the previous two tracks, but there's still a tight groove to it that works really well, even if it does sort of meander about in the ending, being a little too repetitive for my taste. But considering some of the crap plaguing active rock radio right now, a song like this is well welcome. Please kick Ivan Moody's bitch fit off of the chart, Allison Chains. That crap is at number three. We beg you. Yeah, Luke is not going to be happy when he has to do Billboard Got Rocked next month. <laughs> <laughs> no, he will not. Anyway, let's move on from uh, the grunge to the grind. We have the second single from uh, Grindcore Act Pig Destroyer's newest album, Head Cage. Of course, coming out first week of September. And this one is called The Torture Fields. And, you know, I feel like this track as a single was chosen specifically because of all the people who heard Army of Cops and were like, This doesn't sound like Pig Destroyer. Get out of here. I mean, this one, so this one opens, this, it's a pretty steady but still, like, pummeling groove where, like, the drum fills are, like, seriously, like, fucking dense as hell. Like, I don't know how many fucking takes it took to get this to the version that it is with just how much, like, rhythmic switch-ups and, like, fill details there are. Uh, but, you know, it maintains that, you know, steady pace. But then there's, of course, that brief break and then gets immediately into, you know, the more primo Pig Destroyer, you know, grinding, you know, fast blast beats and fucking, like, rapid fire guitar riffs and everything. You know, it's all fucking fast and aggressive, coated with just those layers of those fucking gnarly, grindy vocals and everything. And, of course, there's that pretty gnarly, like, um, ending you know breakdown and everything it, this is definitely more intense overall and just god it, this album's gonna be so good y'all it's gonna be fucking fucking grind man we need the grind <laughs> yeah this song is a case of well that is really quickly didn't it pretty good stuff and it just hits real hard with that first switch up to that first super insane blast beat section i'm impressed keep it up guys mm. And so, uh, moving on from that to, uh, some electronic here. So, yes, uh, as we mentioned a week, or perhaps two weeks ago, I'm not exactly sure on the precise time frame, uh, Aphex Twin, um, had teased the announcement of a new EP called Collapse, which was supposed to air with a premiere video on Adult Swim, but sadly getting pulled because it didn't pass the Harding test. You know, lots of, uh, potential to trigger seizures with all its, like, you know, imagery and everything, supposedly. But the video did make its way online, and with it, the announcement of the actual EP, Collapse, coming out September 14th. And the track in question is, well, it's titled T69 Collapse, which, first off, nice. And, yeah, I suppose that's to be expected. And first I'll say... Yeah, I could definitely see why this didn't make it to television. Man, there's a... Yep. Th mm -hmm. There is some shit that happens in this video. Fucking the constant pulsating and strobing. And, like, pretty much right away it starts with not just, like, rapid fire, like, lighting scheme changes. But the fact that you see, like, these CG buildings with the rapid, like, s you know, scrolling lines of code. That It's just kind of a strain on the eyes. And then as the cityscape starts to, like, you know go all Inception or Doctor Strange, they all just kind of, like, fold and pulsate into one another, like, just booming like a boombox, which, that's basically what that album art and all those images are. It's basically, like, you know, the effect of, like, a sonic reverberation pushing up against the Aphex Twin logo, and so, you know, yeah, <laughs> probably a good idea to keep this out of the way yeah, that people don't know any better. it is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, uh, as for the song itself, it's... It, it's certainly every bit as, you know, all over the place as the actual uh, video is. You know, there's a lot of, like, clicking percussive elements, the rapid, you know, kick drum parts, the saturated, you know, bass synth in there. There's kind of this soft and numbing synth melody that's kind of played out in the background. There's a couple of beat switch-ups in there, especially, like, in the middle where everything gets, like, super glitched out, like, with all the bleeps and blips and, you know, the rest of the synth melodies and everything. But then eventually, like, the outro gets to, like, this nice, still with, like, the, you know, the sort of choppiness and, like, IDM, you know, stuff, but, like, the melody still goes back to being, like, you know, nice to listen to. It certainly sounds like Aphex Twin and, uh, <laughs> new album when. I mean, we already have the EP, but come on, man, give us the goods. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, uh, regarding that video, 
Yeah, I can say, yes, there are some pretty, pretty heavy um, strobe lighting effects in here that definitely wouldn't cut pass for TV. And I'll be honest, I pretty much had to turn away from most of this because the flashes were straining my eyes. And I'm watching this in a well-lit setting, so yeah, pretty bad. My eyes! Yeah. yeah the song um, itself, though, is great. Yeah. I can't wait for more. So I mean, so yeah, song is great. That will get me the fucking chills. Like when, as like like like, like when I watch it, I, I I feel like a sudden chill just went in my body. Like this this is some very trippy shit. This is not a good thing to watch if you're high. If you are high, you shouldn't watch this. Or if you do watch and you're high, prepare to get more fucked up than usual. Yes, yes, this is true. Th- this is very true. Anyway. You know, while we're on the subject of Adult Swim, which now that I think about it, technically started with Joey Perp and continued with Pig Destroyer, let's talk <laughs> about another uh, veteran of Adult... Let's talk about... Not another veteran. Well, yes, another veteran. Anyway, Adult Swim Singles, Ryan Hemsworth. He was on that shit in 2016, and he is apparently prepping a uh, new album called Elsewhere coming out September 21st. And so we have the uh, new track from him, this one called Think About You, which uh, happens to feature a very familiar face uh, of all people, Joji. (laughs) Yeah, he's here on this. And, you know, pretty much all I have to say is that, you know... It's a very delicate, soothing song. Lots of, you know, twinkly melodies. It sounds very pleasant. And, you know, Joji's vocals on it, it, hell, it certainly does sound like a Joji track. So, you know, delivers what's promised. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically what yeah, what he said. Like, this is a very chill track. And, and yeah, and it's especially how... There's a check for, for Ryan Hughes from Central Last Track I heard from him, which... We covered like a long time ago, which wasn't that good. I don't remember. I don't remember what it was, but it was like way, way back in the maybe the early days. But yeah, this track is pretty solid. All right, and uh, oh boy, more Adult Swim singles veterans, and this one from one who was on the most recent one. All right, so electronic producer The Field. They also have a new album coming out September twenty first called Infinite Moments. The lead off single from the album which we have here is called who goes there and this one is nine minutes clearly this is a man who likes to take his time with uh drawing out song ideas and when we say drawn out well that's pretty much it like okay so pretty much what you get from the start is like these uh there's these long droning vocal samples this sort of uh pulsating kick drum with a somewhat off-kilter rhythm uh you know, there's uh, this sort of stuttering synth melody underneath all that, you know, where the tones of it somewhat change on occasion, but it's only really switching between, like, two long-form patterns. And it pretty much just bears that part out for, like, the whole nine minutes. Hell, it feels like listening to one song three times in a row, pretty much, to the point where it just numbs you and it begins to take over and consume your very being. Yeah, it's alright, I guess. I liked it. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty cool. Really, really cool. Like, I do like the way that it starts off with that beat, with that very quiet summer, st- like, stuttering beat, and then when it gets, like, four minutes in, four minutes in, the other the, the percussion does kick in. And also, I noticed that, I don't know if it's my headphones or well, okay, I have one for okay, okay. Well, I'm only Airbus because I'm because I'm cheap. I don't know if I hear something clicking. I don't know <laughs> if it's part. I don't know if it's part of the song or is it my hip or is it my earbuds or I'm I'm confused. It's like it's like I don't know if it's the if it's you know the aesthetic or just me being cheap. <laughs> the A word. <laughs> well, you know, probably when this thing like numbs on you for so long, something is bound to slip through the cracks. Anyway, uh, let's move on from that to... Oh, hey, look, we've got another song from that their uh, periphery side project thing, named after a unit of time. What's it called? <laughs> Two weeks ago? <laughs> You're a little off. Uh, seven centuries ago? Colder. Hmm. Hmm. A nanosecond ago? It's four seconds ago, you... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, trolling. 
What, you're not going to take over here? Oh, I was waiting for my cue. Uh, you can just take over on your own, <laughs> man. You're a big boy, I assume. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll put on my big boy pants one arm at a time. <laughs> <sighs> so yes, the latest cut from Misha Mansoor and Jake Bowen's electronic project four seconds ago is out, entitled Galaxy, and we also have not only an album title, but a release date. Their first album, The Vacancy, will be out on September 28th, and it will feature a lot of, atmos- a lot of atmospheric electronic goodness, such as, with this track as I mentioned, Galaxy. Very atmospheric, with a lot of pendulum-style electronics all over. Really big with ambient soundscapes, from the vocals to the sort of hushed guitars laying in the background on top of layer upon layer upon layer of beautiful electronic synth work. There's even a little bit of a synth wave vibe in the background. Dude, I said the same thing! Yeah. I'm telling you, this is catching on. Like, literally, the second it opens up, I was like, hmm, synthwave, you see? It it sounds more like one of the calmer tracks on, like, a Dan Terminus album, pretty much. Just, you know, layered with all those uh, periphery-isms. All the lush layered melodies, you know, the kick-heavy drum beat, the bass synths that have enough body to them to, you know, feel like an actual bass guitar is in there. (laughs) It sounds you know pretty much like periphery interludes and shit all stretched out into one long song mm-hmm certainly welcome for me i'm sure uh the rest of the album will be just as interludey and atmospheric and synth wavy and crap anyway uh moving on from uh, ambient electronic to uh in your face you know rock rap fusion thingies so yes we're once again talking about mr tom morello dropping his solo album the atlas underground in october 12th and we finally have the track that we all wanted to hear uh mm-hmm. the song rabbit's revenge which features production from bass nectar and guest verses from a uh, big boy and of course one half of rtj i'm glad reagan's dead killer mike <laughs> so so <laughs> yeah yeah, so yeah, um, this track is pretty much banging because I mean, because because it really had like Big Boy coming to, 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 to talk about uh, to, to talk a lot of shit, especially you know around uh, especially you know around the uh, you know um, you know black screen like recent like uh, like black like discrimination recent as a recent you know like the stuff happened with people like Sandra Bland Ferguson and you know all the shits that going around going around going around the world considering. All the shit, all the shit happening, and with and with these lyrics, they 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 become especially killer, especially killer Mike on this verse. I mean, in the second verse, it says, "Fight for my life like a motherfucking Trayvon, fight for my life like a motherfucking Mike Brown, because I refuse to be the next nigga shot down." They do, they they do, they do, they do, they do put some real some real shit in it. They say some real shit in there, and I mean, yeah, I mean, I know it's so far, but it's definitely it's, it's definitely some it's definitely, well not hard, well not hard hitting shit, well. It is hard hitting shit, but this is, you know, you know, it, you know, it's a pretty, you know, it's some, it's some pretty rocking shit. Like it's, it's on there, and with bass nature's production, it's, it's, a, it's all right. It's a pretty solid track. See, this is how good Prophets of Rage could, would sound if they didn't have their heads up their ass. <laughs> That's what I said. I was listening to this and wondering. Why does Prophets of Rage exist again? Because this just blows it way out of the water. I don't know, man. I just don't know. Anyway, um, for this next one... Yeah, for this next track, I'm just going to let Mr. Mark take over here, since this was uh, something he brought to all our attention, so he has the floor. Okay, okay, so even though... Okay, so we got this new track, even though it's more about the feature artist. This artist by the name... This artist, well, this man by the name of... David Loco, aka David Speck, who's also known as Part Time, who's making a bunch of like '80s weird pop for some time now, and he teamed up with another weird pop auteur, a dude by the name of Ariel Pink. Hey. Yep. So yeah, they both team up, and just okay, and he got a new album out called called uh, shit, what's it called? Spell Number Six. November second, dude. That's due out, and it got it got a song called "I Can Treat You Better," and it's a and 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 the song got this re, get a very synth wave eighty every synth wave eighty style, but that's a, a, a style song which you know for this is some this is some eighty shit right here from the from the very murky lo-fi I mean, lo-fi sound 
to the phone to the, phone, to the um, chorus. Going, I can treat you better. I can treat with you know the very sippy, soft rock type of shit with 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 very good sex solo. Like okay, okay, I see what this guy's doing and and know and know me like Ariel Pink. I mean, I did put his album on my best of list last year. All right, I all right, I'm I'm liking this. <laughs> Got some good shit out there. I don't really have much to add other than it's certainly some very soothing indie rock with those touches of psychedelia. <laughs> yep. And anyway, uh, speaking of which, so, this next one here. Uh, so, earlier in the year, uh, January, there was a new album from the experimental pop act Tune Yards, which I said was one of my top favorite picks of that month. You can check out that album roundup for that review and everything. And uh, it turns out that's not the only thing they were getting up to uh, this year, as they were also uh, contracted by uh, Mr. Boots Riley to do some, or maybe all, I'm not sure which, uh, but they certainly contributed a significant amount of music to uh, his big breakout film, Sorry to Bother You. And I pretty much knew that as soon as I heard Meryl Garbus's voice in those TV commercials, because I know that voice when I hear it. Which is interesting because that song, that album, also had a couple of songs having to deal with, you know, sort of the whole white person voice motif thing that shows up a lot in the movie. But anyway, uh, turns out, like, following the uh, actual, like, festival premiere of the movie, these, uh, Meryl and her, you know, songwriting partner in Two Yards hooked up with uh, the film star Lakeith Stanfield, who apparently actually does have a rap career of sorts. Mm-hmm. You know, he's part of, uh, God, I wish I jotted down the name of the project here, uh, Moors, I think it is? Yep. I, I, I forgot to get that name, but, yeah, apparently the Keith Stanfield raps, you know, more than just, like, the rap he does, like, in the movie, which I'm not gonna repeat, because I'm white. But, uh, yeah, the two, um, have teamed up together on a, uh, new track called Mango. And, again, it very much touches on some similar themes, sort of similar to what you see in the movie. Like, there's definitely a lot about, you know, preserving black, uh, preserving his black identity in, you know, the face of American, uh, capitalism, colonialism. And, you know, it, there's some, you know, good bars in there, especially, like, how he's not gonna get on the freaking boat. You know, you know, good for you, don't get on those fucking boats. I hear there's shitty rappers on there. <laughs> eh. And, you know, while it has a different vibe from the sort of stuff that I would normally expect from Toon Yards, you know, this one sounds like a very sort of grimy, boom-bap aesthetic, but with uh, Meryl's vocals in the background and certainly some more exotic percussion in the actual instrumentation, it, you know, it almost sort of, like, fits with what we would expect from them, pretty much. And, you know, I'm intrigued. I want to see where this goes. Hmm. Okay, like, I ain't got much to say on this, but... Yeah, this is, yeah, this is what he's, yeah, this is also a pretty solid, solid, solid and weird as fuck track, and what, and yeah, and yeah, I have like, like, like Keith Stanford rap before, uh, before at least in some, at least you know in some parts, but yeah, but, but, but yeah, but yeah, this, yeah, this is really interesting seeing him be, see him on the mic and the, and the dude spit some good, spit some good bars. I'm, I mean, I'm curious. I'm, yeah, I like this. And uh, now to go to the opposite of I like this and to close things out Uh-oh. here. Huh. Kanye West. Oh, so we're not going to talk about that 23 minute Dave Grohl prog rock instrumental? Dude, I didn't even listen to it. And yet you listen to this. Look, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of annoyed with Dave Grohl right now, to be honest. J- just a little because of that last album. Mm. So you'll have to forgive me if I don't want to listen to 23 minutes of him. Plus, I had a busy week, okay? You know, I got stuff to do. But first off, why is it that it's okay for Kanye West to say he loves Pornhub and he gets a premium membership? <laughs> but when I say that I love Pornhub, all I get told is, Sir, please leave. You're harassing the customers at this Jersey Mike's. <laughs> Jeez. But yes, it appears Kanye dropped, uh, again, a pseudo-meme track called XTCY, which, you know, the beat, again, is the best part, as always. But he raps about wanting to, like, masturbate and fuck his sisters in law or whatever, and something about recording himself having sex with women, which I'm pretty sure is illegal in the state of California. Also, more fucking scoop-de-whoop-de-poop. Because, you know, that was so amusing the first time. Blah. So yeah, my thoughts of this on this, 
Um, uh, yeah, uh, um, um, uh, uh, that's all I got. Yes, that, that is indeed all we got. End this with a whimper instead of a bang. I mean, the beat's good, though. Of course, the beat's always good. And, uh, yeah, that basically does it for the new song discussion, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we got a couple of news topics to discuss here, so uh, stay tuned, kids. <laughs> And we're back. We only have two real news topics to discuss here because, you know, again, we're recording this kind of late, so I want to at least be able to get it out in decent time. So uh, let's start off with something of perhaps a big one. I assume we're all thoroughly annoyed after that recent report that most musicians only make 12% of streaming revenue. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, that sucks. How disheartening. But uh, it seems Spotify still has some big business moves they're trying to play. Uh, Turns out in the past week, they announced a new, quote, long-term partnership with, of all companies, Samsung, the electronics manufacturer that I'm sure makes some of our phones. I mean, I'm rocking my Samsung Galaxy S7 right here. So, you know, um, as part of this... explode! (laughs) No. That's the Note 7. Oh. They're different. (laughs) And I'm not sure what the difference is other than the explodey part, but I know there is a difference and that matters. <laughs> but yes, um, starting you know now, uh, Spotify is going to become the go-to music provider across all Samsung devices. Uh, this partnership is going to go you know more full into effect with the upcoming line of a uh, Samsung Galaxy S9 smartphones, where Spotify will be pre-installed as the default music streamer. This, of course, includes other devices like the Galaxy Home smart speaker and uh, integration with uh, Samsung's voice assistant Bixby. Wow, is that really the name? Bixby. Uh, Damn, they they that that's that's sad. Like. Okay, I know you can't exactly match stuff that's as iconic as Siri or as slick and sexy sounding as Alexa and Cortana, but Bixby? (laughs) Isn't it after the dude that played the Hulk in the 70s? (laughs) Why? Why? Probably made Bixby. Uh. Oh, Bixby! (laughs) That's my old ass butler. Hey, uh, Bixby, uh, can you tell me where I kept my blue potato chips? You left it in the sink, not here in the fridge. Thanks, Big Speed. Jeez. <laughs> you know, I, I tend to follow a lot of tech news because I'm, I've always been a techie kind of guy. I don't really see what the point of this is. I mean, okay, so Spotify will be the default music player for Samsung devices. I don't really get why that has to be a thing, but apparently if they want more money, I suppose that'll work. I guess it'll work well with Samsung since they got that, uh... Oh, yeah, that Fortnite deal going on. But... Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. the thing that you can't pl- cross-play on PS4. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that something for Samsung? Timed exclusivity. I, I don't really get the point of that either, but... Hey, what do I know? I'm not the one trying to follow Apple in every step. I see you, Samsung. I see you. You know, you see that, but honestly, I prefer using Samsung devices, at least if we're talking on the smartphone, you know, side to that fucking iPhone piece of shit. Look, I'm sorry, I I need, like, an actual set of buttons, whether physical or not, to interact with a phone more than just the one, man. Sorry. Yeah. Fucking, it's like a baby toy. But at least mine won't explode in my pants. Again, that's the Note (laughs) 7. Oh, I have the Galaxy S7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still funny. But, um, you know, there's one thing that I am interested here 
you know, if you spent any amount of time watching, like, uh, you know, cellular plan, you know, smartphone advertisements and anything, th- there's almost, like, at least half the time, there's always some kind of deal to hook you up with either unlimited data or, like, you know, free uh, paid accounts on, like, streaming services. Like, I-, I think it's either Verizon or Sprint that gives you, like, free Netflix if you, like, sign up for, that, you know, a cellular plan with them and their smartphones. That, that, Correct that's me if I'm actually wrong on that. T-Mobile. T-Mobile, that's yes. what it was. I knew it was one yeah, of the T-Mobile other. T-Mobile gives you Netflix. Sprint gives you Hulu and Tidal, which nobody uses Tidal. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I bring that up because I wonder if um this partnership, you know, you talk about the money thing, but I wonder if this, in a roundabout way, will promise perhaps free, you know, Spotify premium for Samsung smartphone users and you know subscribers to like at&t mobile plans i mean they already do that thing where like hulu and spotify come together on a package deal so you know it, it can't be that difficult to extend it that far and plus that would work out you know great for me you know because i already paid for spotify premium and my main mobile device is a samsung so hmm, i suppose we'll see in the coming weeks of anything that'll come out of this uh, partnership but who knows they might they might uh, combine Spotify Premium and Fortnite V Bucks because Samsung makes really weird business decisions. I, I I still don't understand why they have time exclusivity for it. It doesn't make sense. What gives? I I don't know, man. I don't make the rules. Do I look like a business expert? That's your job, man. Well, yeah, for music, not tech. What's oh oh like all of a sudden you're not interested in tech or anything? Oh. You're like the techiest guy on this podcast. All I'm saying is, I don't know how all this business transaction bullcrap happens or how it operates. It, it baffles me. I'm into music. That's what I've studied. I didn't study tech business. Yeah, yeah. But to, anyway, let's move on from that to our other news topic here, which is a festival announcement. And, uh, yep, from uh, Felicia the Goat himself, Tyler the Creator has announced the latest iteration of uh, the Camp Flognaw Carnival, taking place November 10th through 11th in good old Dodger Stadium. I mean, they gotta be doing something. What, you think sports teams play games there? <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's a dump anyway. Pretty much. And so, you know, the lineup, of course, with Tyler, the create... I- I'm actually trying to understand, like, the layout of this, um, fucking poster here. Because yeah. it looks like it's doing an hourglass thing with, like, the most important information centered in the middle. But then, like, there's still some prominent names, like, you know, at the bottom and at the, you know, top. Plus, Tyler, the creator isn't <laughs> even the dead middle name. Yeah. Uh, hell, the dead middle name here, like, right at the center... Kids See Ghosts, you know, that Kanye Kid Cudi project, you know, performing live for the first time. Yep. There's that. Um, anyway, uh, you know, searching around that, of course, we have uh, the Saucy Postman. <laughs> but will he bring his letter? I don't know, will he? <laughs> uh, we have the miseducation of Miss Lauren Hill. I hope she shows up. Yes, of course. We, of course, have SZA. You know, that's always yep. good to see. Uh, ASAP Rocky. The Internet. Brock Hampton. Kali Uches. Jaden right. Smith. <laughs> hashtag free Earl Sweatshirt. <laughs> Rex Orange County. Men I Trust. There are none. Uh, Domogenesis. Slow Hollows. Left Brain. So, you know, already we're getting a good amount of Odd Future alumnus here. Hell, they apparently did, like, a brief reunion for a song thing at a concert recently, so maybe, who knows. Uh, oh, fuck, Hobo Johnson. Who is he? What the fuck is a Hobo, Hobo Johnson? Hobo the love makers. Uh, yeah, they make love to their body pillows, all right. <laughs> of course, Mike G, plus sounds. Uh, I, I, hang on. Turnstile? Like, that turnstile? What, are you guys not on speaking terms with Trash Talk anymore? Come on. So, yeah, there's the, you know, immediate, like, sticks out like a sore thumb. And now we're moving up to the top half of this hourglass here. Tierra Whack, Ravina, Taco. Hey. Who I assume is, who I assume is just going to scream about cheese. <laughs> uh, Wallows, Bane's World, <laughs> Raphael Sadiq, Majid Jordan, Flatbush Zombies. Little Dragon, Billy Ellish. Oh, so that's how you spell Georgia Smith. Yeah. 
shit, I have to correct a typo in one of the album roundups. Shit. Then, of course, uh, Playboy Cardi, mm-hmm. Virgil Abloh, and Pusha ah. T. <laughs> oh, so, so, you know, th- there's a, there's some good names in here. There's some bad names in here. There's the Postman. Mm-hmm. Seems like it'll be a fun carnival, mm-hmm. you know, for those who enjoy at least half the stuff here. I mean, I want to go for Brockhampton. Yeah, Pusha. That'd be cool, man. Yeah. This might be the first and only time anybody will ever get a chance to see uh, Kit Cudi and Kanye perform on the same stage at the same time. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, like the majority of acts I do want to see. Like, you don't want to see like you know people like Tyler, Tyler, the Internet, SZA, Pusha, Little Dragon, Blackfish. Um, yeah, yeah, but, you know, basically most of the motherfuckers. You don't want to see Hobo Johnson make love? I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> I think we'd all much rather see Ants in My Eyes Johnson. Oh, I'm, I'm Ants in My Eyes Johnson. I, I hope her prices are not too low. Uh, $100 for this microwave. I think I'd, I actually don't know. I, I have Ants in My Eyes and I, I, I can feel no pain, but that's not as catchy. Right. <laughs> Rick and Morty references. But anyway, um, that's it for the news, so let's just talk about uh, the new album releases uh, for this week of August 17th, 2018. Uh, Starting at the top, there is a new solo album from Slipknot DJ Sid Wilson, Sexcapades of the Hopeless Robotic. Ooh. Uh, There's a new album from Indie Rockers Animal Collective with Tangerine Reef. Uh, The newest one from Savannah Metaler's Black Tusk with TCBT. Uh, of course, prepare to get laid by Danny Sexbang and murdered by Ninja Brian, because there's a new Ninja Sex Party album, Cool Patrol. There's a new album from Indie Rockers Death Cab for Cutie with Thank You for Today. Oh, and uh, speaking of Ryan Hemsworth, there's a new Mitski album this week, Be the Cowboy. Mm, okay. uh, there's a new project from OCs with Smote Reverser. Uh, Steflon Dawn releasing her debut mixtape, Secure. Uh, Let me guess. Uh, Lil Pump with Harvard Dropout, which you fucking no. wish, pal. Eh? No. I'm closer to being a Harvard Dropout than you. You're a fucking clown college dropout. <laughs> you don't get to rip off the good era of Kanye. No, no, no. Bro, Kanye is closer to being a Harvard Dropout than you. Come on. And then, uh, you know, just as a reference, I probably should have jotted down a name for this, but apparently there's a new Young Thug album coming out this Friday, or tape, or whatever it is. I, I didn't get the name of it, but, you know, you have that to look forward to if you give a shit about Young thug man. That, I found it, I found it. That would be, uh, Slime Language, and screw you, Complex, we're not loading. There we go. <laughs> yeah, and it will be coming out, uh... Actually, Thursday, so it might be out right now when you're listening to this. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and it's going to have and some good features, including... Hey, Uzi, haven't seen you in a while. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and uh, last but certainly not least, or maybe least, I don't know, uh, the newest studio album from Ariana Grande with Sweetener. So, of course, now it's time to clean house and get the hell out of here. So, Alex, where can they find you on the internet? As always, or of Azure... Wherever you find me on the internet, that is, if you haven't been purged by Jack and his criminal gang doing some purging. Seriously, all you had to do was get rid of the Nazis, Jack. It's all you had to do. Hmm. Mark, what about you? So, I usually on Twitter at Matt Tyler Media and on my site, Matt Tyler Media, have one doubt, WordPress.com. As of course, we, I just crossed over 100, well, right now 101. We caps of we 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 bear, bear cat bears and and that's what we want today, especially with, especially where especially with episode where, no joke, some maybe some maybe, some say Charlie as a as a yaoi. Spell y o w i e. Oh yeah, I yeah, heard about that. Yeah, as in like that. This yeah, this yeah, th- also something about an Australian trap rapper. <laughs> <laughs> the word trap is used so many times in that episode. I keep thinking, I keep thinking, it's like a mixtape. 
So you're saying they bees in the trap? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> anyway, uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Curious Cat at Rob Barracuda. Email me, Robert at SurrealResolution.com for any offers and inquiries and all that stuff. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Google Play and iTunes. New audio-only episodes go up every Wednesday. Well, this one's probably going to go up on Thursday. Uh, video usually goes up by, you know, the weekend on the official YouTube channel of Surreal Resolution. Just subscribe and hit the bell tab so you'll always be notified whenever new episodes of the podcast go up there. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Surreal Rezo. Like us on Facebook. Uh, be sure to visit SurrealResolution.com. And, of course, DecibelBoost.SurrealResolution.com. Uh, ah, decibelboost.surrealresolution.com I usually use do that smoothly uh, for this podcast specifically and of course podcast ONA which is our anime podcast go, ha, how to go with the B team yeah how to go with the B team man yeah apparently it turned out better than I thought but again I'm a, I'm a perfectionist so you know I tend to get a little personal when it comes to my work not being 100% good golf claps Anyway, uh, be sure to follow our written content. You know, got all that good stuff. Attack on Titan recaps. Hopefully I'll get an album review out sometime in the next week or so. And, of course, uh, Mr. Mark over here has, uh, you know, taken a bullet for the team with that new Nicki Minaj project. Yeah. Spoiler, it's going to be dethroned. So what you're saying is it's not good? It's not good. <laughs> Uh, anyway uh be sure to jump into our discord if you ever want to dink it up with us and make fun of that mucin guy seriously fuck that guy (laughs) as always huge shout out to mr e for graciously letting me use his pod music for this podcast links to his shit down in the description thank you for joining us this week be sure to tune in you know next week as always for uh, episode 94 and um until next time you know, screw this. I want some biscuits and gravy. I'm out of here, bitch. Oh, the VMAs are next week. Oh, shit. On Monday, for some reason. Fuck. Fuck.